I got some uh, exciting news, guys. My gravity flyer is picking up way more power. What's going on is, you saw my video that I upgraded my Tesla coil. What's actually going on is when the Tesla coil, and I didn't have it grounded before, it was just a, uh, a floating ground. I grounded it. And I get about 15% more power that way. And with the upgrade that I made to my Tesla coil, I'm getting more power than that. So basically I'm getting 30% more than I was getting before, which makes the field so much easier and so much bigger. But what it's doing is it's making the capacitance to the ground greater. And you need to put your gravity flyer on the concrete on the ground or on the ground outside. Here's why. You think capacitor to ground and everybody starts thinking, okay, well, that just means the ground itself. Well, not necessarily. The energy in the ground isn't on the surface. It's down below. That makes the biggest difference in understanding this a little better. When you're creating a capacitor to the ground, you're not necessarily creating to the actual physical ground. The actual ground is put deep into the ground. So you're going a little further under the surface. So when you set your gravity flyer on the ground, you're creating that capacitance to the ground. It's a different way to understand it, and it makes more sense that way. Now you can understand that you're now putting in a layer in between. So you have your actual voltage here, you have a layer in between, and then you have voltage here. So right there, guys, we are creating something totally different here. All right. We all know this to be an open air capacitor. So what happens when the whole craft is the energy source and the capacitor is between the earth and the ground? It picks up energy. And that's exactly what my Tesla coil is doing. It's picking up way more energy into the gravity flyer itself. Now we can expand on that. And I'm so excited about it, I don't think you understand. It's kind of the breakthrough you look for in one of these things. You see Alexi's device, it just suddenly picks up energy. And then it just goes from a little bit of a wobbly state like this, and then it starts to turn, and then boom, it's off the ground. Guys, that's right where I'm at. I'm right at that point right there where I'm picking up that energy now. You saw it in a couple of my videos where it picked it up just a little bit. And it was amplifying it uh, with the resonance and the amplification point. So now I have more energy to put into that. It's so cool. That piezo buzzer, guys, just so you understand, when you put it in there, it's changing the octave of your center plate. And once it gets to the right one, it's pretty resistant. It stays there. It likes to be in that amplification point. It does not like to move. Some people see it as an anomaly where you can switch that and then you can uh, you know, go in and out of phase. But it's not working that way. It likes to stay right there. It wants to stay in that amplification point. With that Tesla coil, with that way more power, man, it's actually forcing this thing to stay there. That's the cool part about this. It's creating an energy loop inside your gravity flyer. It's working and it hits that resonance point, boom, goes in, loops, hits it, hits it again. Guys, there's a more understanding here to the harmonics that are going into this because of that that's changing this. It, it, I, I don't know how to describe it the correct way. All I can say is that we're getting more energy and because we're getting more energy, it likes to stay in the correct harmonic state. Like I said before, when we're changing the octave, we're just changing the tune of the singer, okay? He's in the wrong key. We just need to put him in the right key and then he'll stay there. And that's all it really is. So we're getting so much more power here. The actual ground itself, the word I was looking for earlier was dielectric. It's the actual dielectric between the power source under it and the power source above. The actual ground right there that you're not really tapping into because your actual ground goes way under that. So it has to be shoved deeper into the earth so that you can get to power. That's the understanding there, guys. It's completely different than what you thought it was. We all think that Alecki said, okay, I'm just going to, you know, take the power and bounce it off the earth. No, he's taking the power of the earth 
and he's actually pushing it into his gravity flyer as a capacitor. And that's the biggest difference. He's actually getting more energy out of it. Once he has the energy in it, it can sustain it. So why doesn't he put it in in the beginning? It's the most common question you might have. Why isn't this guy just, hey, let's put it in the beginning and make it work? Because the energy itself is a little different. We're getting close to Earth energy when you get to static and you get to very low amps, stuff like that. You're getting close to an Earth type of energy, but you're not there yet. Even the piezoelectric disc is not quite there yet. They're close, but they need that Earth energy. One other thing, just so you guys understand this. He shows this in infrared, and I couldn't understand it for the longest time. And then I had people tell me that I'm getting gravitational waves on my center plate. And it started to make sense. He's actually picking up radiation on his center plate. And as much as harmful as that is for me to even think about what that is, being how close I was to this thing, it's really what's going on here. He's doing something on a different level. It isn't just voltage, guys. He's working on a completely different level than we are. The radiation itself tells you it. How do you know it's there? Because the plate itself is cold, but when you touch it, it'll burn your fingers. When you get that, you have radiation. And that's what he's looking for in infrared. He wants to see the heat signatures. You see it on the upper plate. You can't see it on the bottom plate. And on the a middle plate, you're not seeing it really at all. But that's what he's looking for. And then when he's getting that radiation, you see those vapors come up. It looks like he's smoking a cigarette, but he's not. It's the energy transfer in the room. That's what it is. When you get it right, the whole room feels like it's filled with static electricity on you. You can feel it going through you. It's a complete change. It, it's something you have to experience for yourself. This is just like one of the coolest things. Not cool for the radiation by any means, but it's definitely why he goes outside and it's definitely why he wears the helmet. Personally, man, I'd like a pair of chonies with the, you know, get some of that tinfoil on there. You cover those parts too. But man, you know what? It's a cool understanding to understand finally where he's going. He's using this thing as a capacitor to the ground, and then he's just getting it to come off the ground, and he's switching the actual, uh, I don't want to say the charges on this thing. So whether he wants it to repulse or he wants it to, to lift, you know what I mean? By repulsing, he's changing the charges in order to do that. What happens in your center plate is every time that piezo buzzer, it changes it, it's not necessarily changing the octave once it gets in phase. When it goes to try to get to that point and then it comes off of it a little bit and it comes back, it's changing the charge. It's actually changing it from whether it needs to be positive or negative. And that's one of the most clearest understandings that I can tell you about it. He's changing the charge in which direction it's going. We see it, we put our static meter on it and we can see the static go from positive up here to negative up here, and then switch back and forth. But we don't have it in the right phase. We're not in the right octave to actually correctly see it. We're always checking it when we're in the wrong one. It's only when you reach that special state of resonance in this thing that you start to really understand this. When it picks up the energy, that's the time to check it. And you can't do that with all these things going crazy. You have to be able to find the resonance point. Now, this is where it gets crazy because it's in harmonics too. You're getting things that are like, I don't want to say it's a graph. It goes like this. And there's like eight to 10 different points in this thing that you can be amplifying. When you think you're in the right one and there's not enough energy in it, you're actually in the wrong one. You're amplifying something over here that's low when there's one over here that's high. And it's important to switch to that until you get to the one where this comes up to here 
and you're actually amplifying it correctly because you hit the right one. It's easy to miss it. Look, I've been staring at an oscilloscope for a while. Trust me, it's not my favorite thing in the world. And I have been forcing myself to get into it and see it. And I'm looking for amplification points every time I do it. I'm mapping this thing out, man, and finding exactly each one where they are based on my disk speed and exactly graphing it to where I need to. So I found the right one. And I found the one that's giving me more energy by putting more energy in my Tesla coil. You cannot raise the energy in your flyback transformer. It's actually a negative for this whole thing. This thing has to run with that thing as low as possible because the amplification comes from your Tesla coil. And you saw my video on that where I show you how they work together, right? That you can turn up your Tesla coil and it'll start making it spark on that disc. Well, you would have to turn down the high voltage at that point in order to get it right. So when the Tesla coil comes up, it makes those sparks come over. So you turn down your high voltage when you start. And all you want to do in the beginning is you want to turn it on. It'd be much better to have a button on it so that you can just press it and it hits max, press it again, it hits max again, again, hit max again. Then you have a polarization going on on the plate. Then you can turn that thing way down, get it at the right spot, turn up your Tesla coil, bring up the energy. That way you're not sparking over right away. And you can start to get this thing to work right. Then it can get right into the correct resonance point. You can tap the center plate if you want to cheat this thing and make it go faster. You can also, if you want to make this thing build up the static energy a lot faster, Take a dryer sheet to the top, to, to each disc, and get it to expand the energy faster. You can very quickly cut down your time in testing by cheating those two ways. I do it, and you know what it does? It creates the energy in this faster. I get to the resonance state faster. I'm able to get my tune done faster. Now, you still have to let it build up, though. It's going to take you a little while to build up, but instead of waiting two hours, you can have this thing ready in about 10 minutes where it's in that energy state. That's how you start to do this thing, man. You have to learn the nuances and tricks and getting energy to work better. Static energy is easy. We see it when we look at a Van der Graaff. You know, you can use pantyhose, you can use dryer sheet, whatever. If you can get it to rotate around as that band, you can create the electrostatic charge way faster. It's a simple shortcut to getting you there to where you need to be. So, what would it be easier to do? Have a little lever on it that just touches down and touches off, touches down whenever you want to bring up the charge on it. Would be a lot faster, not something that's easy to be able to put in there. It takes a little time and engineering to put it in there. And then I'm still not sure if the weight is correct on it. You know what I mean? Do we need to go, can we go a little heavier? If we could, it makes this a lot easier to tune. I could add in some adjustments for the plates where they can go up a little bit and come down a little bit and be, you know, at the right height wherever I want. If I can add maybe another pound and a half to this thing, I can have all the adjustment in it that I wanted to. The thing I have to do is we have to get it to start to lift so I can understand where the weight is. So, but I'm excited, guys. This, this Tesla coil thing is just blew, blew me away. Ground it. There's a reason why he grounds it. There's a reason why it sits on the ground. There's a reason because he's amplifying the energy into it. He's creating a loop. The only thing that gives you the radiation is the Tesla coil. The high voltage will not do it. The high voltage is just there to build up the static electricity charge and to be able to polarize the plate. That's it. The eddy current has to be in there, guys, because the actual aluminum itself, this is why you use aluminum. It's so crazy. A lot of people are not understanding this. You say, well, you can get a better conductor with copper. You can get a better conductor with iron. Well, yeah, you can. But you're not getting the effect of aluminum. Aluminum gives you eddy current. Eddy current's important, okay? It actually serves a purpose here. It allows you to put a charge on a piece of aluminum. It does not want to stay there. That's the key. The amplifying the eddy current forces that aluminum 
to throw it out. But because you're putting the high voltage on it, it continues to want to stay in. Guys, push and pull is a gravity well effect. This is why he's doing it. The eddy current is vastly more important than you think. It cannot be overwhelming. It cannot be underwhelming. It has to be just right. It has to give you both effects. Too much eddy current throws it away, doesn't let it hold on. Too little eddy current, and it actually will not throw it out. So you have to understand his thinking process. Because he's not one-dimensional one thinker, man. This guy's got, like, levels on this thing. Way more levels than what it's averaging for most people to look at this. I always say we're not building a toaster here. We're building anti-gravity. What does that mean? You just can't do something simple. It's got, like, four different effects for most things in this craft. That's what makes it special. That's why it's so hard for people. They... They get in there and they plug in the high voltages and they're, you know, they're all excited and they go, man, this is great. I'm getting it going. And then they go, oh, I didn't stop to learn the rest. I, 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 I just ran it. And because it didn't lift, I gave up. Well, guys, I'm old. And, and you know what? I know some people say I'm not that old, but look, my body's really old and I'm getting really tired. And it, everything's going to have to be, you know, right there and that's the way i like it I, I i'm like a dog chewing on a bone man i don't give up until it's gone and you know what that's the way it works when you get older you just you know you start to develop a little more patience you start to develop a, a lot more uh vigor in getting things done because you know the rest of the day you can't do it so i don't know maybe that's just me but i'm not that little kid anymore man i can't just Yo, yeah, let's just do it. No. Process by process by process, I'm getting each part done, checking it off the list, and getting right down to where I need to get. This is the best part. When you can get energy in a device, and it stays there. That's awesome. That doesn't happen very often. You're not being able to pick that energy up in normal devices. This thing is getting the energy in it from the ground that's staying in the device. That in itself is an achievement. That is something that everybody out there who wants to talk about their uh, free energy would love to have in their device. But they don't have it. Okay? You, you, you can't spin your way to free energy. It just doesn't work that way. Anyway, that's enough about that. I don't need to go on tangent about that stuff. What I'm trying to tell you is, is this device is getting very close. And I would expect in the next, you know, probably month of testing, I'm going to start to see this thing tip over and start to get in some of the other effects in it as I just dial these things in. It's kind of like my Tesla coil. I didn't understand this. And a big shout out to Archangel out there who uh, actually showed the testing on this thing for the first time. Thank God somebody actually just showed it. I've asked the question a thousand times. You just put a wire on it, connect it to your oscilloscope, and that's how you get the actual resonance frequency. And I can't get a straight answer. It's the simplest question in the world. I can't get a straight answer. Thankfully, that's exactly what he said to do. And he showed you as you put this thing on different points, exactly where the increases are, exactly how to get this thing in tune. Man, so easy. Five minutes, man. Five minutes of actually just showing the correct way to do something gives you so much knowledge. Oh, so frustrating when they just want to talk about other stuff. Whatever. I got it. I got it in tune. Okay. It can get better, and I'm getting better at it. But, man, big shout out to Archangel on that one, man, because uh, that video on that. And I included it on my Tesla coil. I went back to the Tesla coil video and added it to there. And I'll add it to this video so you guys can check it out. Way better improvement on tuning. Makes your whole life easier to understand things. And you know what? It makes the biggest difference in this, actually gra in this actual gravity flyer. So, again, let's just go over this, you know, one more time so that we understand it here. Okay? First thing we do when we start this up, we start the motors. Now, 
There's no big trick here. It's an understanding of where you need to get to. When you set your motors the first time, you're looking for a point where it wobbles. You just want enough energy where it wobbles. There's points in there where it's really smooth. You don't want the smooth point. You want to wobble. And you'll hear it. It's not hard to hear. You know, just like that, okay? But you're not getting a smooth and where you're barely hearing it. That's not what you want here. You want it to get that little bit of off balance, but not overly. And you'll fight it. When you find it, it's hard to miss it after that. You're actually going to get it right. These PC fan motors are not that fast. I cannot run things that fast. I cannot express to you how the understanding of running it at slow speeds is so much better than running it at fast speeds. And you won't understand it until you put the right motor in and do it. You have to run this at a slower speed. This is the resonance point you have to hit. The higher resonance points are the weaker ones. Sounds contradictory? It's absolutely right. So, start our motors, we get it in that vibration state. Okay. Next thing we do is we go over to our high voltage now. We're going to pulse that thing three times at least we're looking to get a charge on it and we're gonna set the charge right there boom 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 like I said it would be easier with a little button that you can push keep it on high hit it three times bring it back down really low okay you don't need a whole lot in there we're talking maybe this much of a turn on there when you get it to start the next thing you're gonna do once you have that done, you don't have to wait a lot of time. You're just setting the charge on it. You're not building voltage yet. You're not building this big charge on it yet. That's going to come later. What you're going to do next is you want to set your Tesla coil. I go ahead and turn it on, and then I start to bring it up. At this point here, you're going to start to have activity in your gravity flyer. It's going to start to make a little bit of a sound difference. It's going to go from a wobbly state. If it goes to where it's flat and it's too flat, like it's, you know, it's too smooth on your motors, then you're in the wrong state. Back it off a little bit. Get it to where it's actually still in that wobbly state, but it's bringing up as high as you can in that wobbly state. Then you can start to adjust this thing. You're going to have your piezo buzzer start to pop off when you get it in the correct resonance state. You need to go over to the plate. This is the fastest way to tune it. Get over to the plate and tap on it and tap on it. When you see the thing start to wobble a little bit more and you start to get a little bit more energy, stop. Let it sit there for a minute. Go back over to your Tesla coil. You want to turn it up a little bit more. Right there, you're going to get a little bit more energy into it. Again, your high voltage is still very low. So, you may start to see this thing doing a little bit of a spark. That's okay. That's not going to kill you on this. Okay? Just let it do it. You're building up the energy into it. Now, once you have that, the piezo buzzer has to come on. You have to turn it on, and you should start within a few minutes start to hear it pop pop there will click 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 all day okay it's telling you that it's running and that you can hear it you may call it a fishing reel sound it doesn't sound like that to me it sounds like clicking but that's where it is that's the understanding of it now the rest is on how you want to do this me personally I take that Tesla coil and I want to get, once it starts clicking, once I'm in the right vibrational state there, I know I'm in resonance, and I got that octave getting close, right? I turn up my Tesla coil again, and I get more energy into it. Now, at this point, you're going to get that radiation effect. It's going to be hot on the outside. But then on the inside, when you put your little gauge on it, it's going to be about 76 degrees, which is cold. It's not hot at all, but when you touch the outside, 
it's going to burn your finger. So just be aware of that. You can touch the center plate. Do not touch the upper or lower plate on this thing that are rotating. That is just insane to do for so many reasons, but it will shock you and it'll ruin your whole experiment. Trust me, it happens a lot to me when I get careless. So I try to make sure that I'm awake when I do this stuff. Had enough coffee. Anyway, so you get that thing cranked up a little bit more, right? So now, this is when you start to see that energy state take off. You're going to start to see this thing just pick up out of nowhere. You guys seen it on my video before. This thing just out of nowhere, it starts to hit more energy, right? And if you're not in the right octave, it won't. So you may have to go back over and tap that plate again if you're not in the right state. But you, you could wait for the piezo and push the button a couple times to get it to change it. It doesn't always change it the right way. So I like tapping the plate better than I like hitting the button to get it in the right state. And that may sound contradictory to you, but you're just setting the stage for this thing to pick up the energy that you need it to pick up. So you get it over there and it starts to pull in this voltage. This is where the understanding comes in. Your Tesla coil is now amplifying the entire thing. It is the key to this whole process. You have this thing getting amplified. You can see the energy pick up. You can physically see this thing pick up that energy. It starts to make the motors go faster. It would be like you're putting the high voltage to the motors and getting it to go faster without the drag on the plate. And that's really what we're looking at. The high voltage is low, so we're not getting a lot of drag on the plate. But the, since the whole craft is producing more energy, it's giving the motors themselves a bit more energy. So the whole thing picks up an energy. And right there is where I'm at. I just need to be able to hit that last point, that last little point where you can actually get the thing to lift off or tip over, whatever. That's right where I am. That's where I am in my testing. That's the point where I am right now. I, I've never been more excited about seeing the more energy in here, guys, because it's actually showing you it picks up. Now, the high voltage itself, what is it going to do? Just so you know this, it's going to build up energy inside the Tesla coil field. I always talk about the fields, and I run a separate gravity flyer on the fields alone, guys, just so I can study this fact. Tesla coil connected to the center plate gives you a field around it. Static electricity can build up inside of it and stay inside the field. Now, the field isn't strong enough to create ozone or anything in there yet, but it'll actually keep the static electricity in it. As long as you don't jump it over with anything crazy, you're fine. And it stays in there, builds, 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 until it creates a form of pressure. Not as much pressure as you'd get if you have ozone and you want to create air in there and create more of a, a, a pressurized chamber. It's not going to give you pressure like that, but it is going to give you a pressure buildup. Radiation on it is what's going to make it lift. You are in a different area than you were before. This is not on a voltage level. This is more like molecules or atoms or something like that not a physicist guys i can't explain that to you but i can tell you it's there and i felt it i know it i've seen it this is exactly what's going on that's where the energy lies it's the key to this project it's the understanding of that tesla coil with rotating fields on top and bottom of it you have a bubble that creates i don't want to say this it's not creating one big bubble. It's creating a bubble like this to the center plate and over the top and then again from the center plate to the bottom and then inside those you have two bubbles. So it's, it's how do I want to say it, more like the ether. When you see videos of people doing the ether and they tell you that hey it comes out like this, it divides in the center and goes like that and then you have heat on the outside, well it makes more sense when you think about it as a magnetosphere being that the equator is hotter than the north and south pole and the actual north and south pole is cold which makes more sense and then the equator is hot which means that's more radiation going on there 
it starts to click a little more. It starts to make you understand there's more here than what you think it is because he's following the process of the earth and the magnetosphere of how it works. And he's not following the path of other devices. That's why it's working this way. So just as an understanding of what I think he's thinking in his head when he builds this, is he getting a push off the ground or is it, is it bouncing off the ground or anything like that? It, is it like a capacitor that just wants to expand like this? I don't think so. I think he uses the ground, like I said, he's pulling the energy out. That's what it's showing. He's pulling the energy out of it. Once it's in there, it's looped. It's done because it's constantly hitting that, that, that amplification in the resonance point. And that's the best way that I can say it right now. Now, I'm sure there's people out there that are far smarter than me that can actually take the math and do it all for you. But that's where it is. That's why this thing is different. It's a full understanding here, guys. It's, it's not what you think it is. It's, it's, it's got such a big difference to it than, than what you would out of the box think. And I know a lot of people out there test this thing. I doubt that most people got to the level of testing that I'm at right now. And it's very important. Ground is important. And your Tesla coil grounded is important. Do it. Find a way to do it. If you don't know how to do it, I'll try to post, post a video when I do my Tesla coil update and show you how to ground it. And I'll show you exactly what I'm doing. I do have more testing coming up, guys, that I'll show. Uh, I have it all in my computer. It takes a while to go through all of it and kind of show you where it is you want to go. And I think I'm just going to do one where I start this thing up and show you from top to bottom how I started it up and everything like that because I think it would be beneficial for people out here who are building this thing for the first time or that want to understand the nuances of it, I think that would be much better. I know Jared showed one on his, when he does his, and he showed you how to start it up. My process is different. You know, he follows more of a Lexi's process, a little bit different on the actual Gravity Flyer itself. My Gravity Flyer is more like a Lexi's, but my startup process is different. Half a million different ways to do something, guys. Uh, as long as we all get to the same result and can understand it, we can all then get a uniform craft together with the uniform parts and then be able to get this thing going. I think everybody's kind of split out on how they do this thing just because they're not, not all in unison in the way we think about this thing. And I, I, I know that because sometimes I try to explain things to people and I think they, they don't understand it at all. And it's probably because I don't talk on the level of a physicist and that's who I'm talking to, you know what I mean? Or I'm talking to an engineer and I you know, use common words instead of engineering terms. And that might throw a lot of people off. So I think the testing and they can see it, they can describe it in their own way, make it a lot easier. Anyway, guys, I got that stuff coming up. I got a lot more videos coming up soon on Tesla coils, on this gravity flyer. I want to start my magnetosphere project. Because I like the fields on my gravity flyer, but I don't, I'm not in love with them. I'd like that to be much, much better. And there's a better way to get that. So anyway, that's it for me today, guys. If you like what you saw today, please like, share, subscribe, and comment. Do all those fun things and have yourself a great day. Thank you.